Hello everyone! Oggi facciamo un sacco di domande, dalle più stupidine alle più intelligenti a un americano random. Cioè, allora, in realtà è random nel senso che è un esemplare di americano, ma è un ospite super speciale perché è il mio insegnante di inglese, cioè di pronuncia. Lui in realtà è un accent coach, quindi quello che fa è pronuncia ed è bravissimo. E io faccio lezione con lui da un po' di tempo e gli ho chiesto tipo Mason, avresti voglia di rispondere a delle domande che i miei follower hanno per te ovviamente ragazzi cioè lui è un americano non può parlare per tutta l'America però secondo me è interessante sentire l'opinione di un americano so without further ado Mason up, guys? Mason before we start do you want to say a few things about yourself like where are you from blah 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 sure yeah I'm from the Bay Area in the United States San Francisco Bay Area specifically the East Bay and I'm a pronunciation accent coach English phonetics accent reduction coach so sì il, eh, lascio i suoi contatti in info box quindi se siete curiosi io lascio Instagram email allora iniziamo con le domande the first one is kind of difficult la prima è abbastanza difficiletta ragazzi how do you see the US 30 years from now what will they be like flattened just a nuclear wasteland <laughs> dragons dinosaurs all kinds of shit No, I, I just think that the U.S. is kind of on a, a little bit of a political self-destructive course, but I sort of have that attitude towards the whole world, not just the United States. Just the world in general is coming to a, a lot of different sort of turning points in history. For the first time in my life, it's hard for me to imagine 30 years ahead. Things are changing, especially in the society. Yeah, in Europe as well. I mean, I'm am in Europe. I've been living in Spain for a while. I'm in uh, Bulgaria right now, but traveling. Number two, is it true that instead of the like carton of milk, you have those big plastic jars? Jugs in America. Yeah, we we have both. We have jugs and cartons. I always see jugs and they're like this big. Yeah, they're huge. It's it's a gallon. I don't know how many liters a gallon is. I'd have to look that one up. How much milk do you drink? Everything's bigger in the US. Come on, you've been to the US. You've ordered a meal and they sit down a plate of food and you're like, how the fuck am I gonna eat all that? I usually can. I'm Italian. We eat a lot. Question number three. Oh, what do you think about the American health system? I think it's deeply flawed in the sense that it's privatized medicine and privatized medicine is incentivized medicine. In other words, doctors get, you know, they get paid and they get kick kickbacks. I don't know if your audience knows what that means. They get extra money to prescribe drugs. They get extra money. For, it's a for-profit system. My opinion is that medical should never be for-profit. It's everyone's right on this planet. But that said, we do have some of the, if you can afford medical care there, we do have some of the best doctors and there's a lot of innovation. That can be said for a lot of industry in the United States. There's a lot of creativity that comes out of this this very flawed culture, which to me, I find the most interesting thing about the United States. Okay. Oh, why do Americans like guns so much? Actually, I received a lot of questions about guns. In a nutshell, we just like to shoot people because it's fun. <laughs> so why do we love guns? That's a good question. Um, you know, people often say, oh, it's Second Amendment rights, right to bear arms. It's in the Constitution. But I mean, the Constitution was written a long time ago when, you know, the idea of overthrowing the government was an important thing. I could probably talk a long time on this question. Um, to me, it's crazy and it's really dangerous and fearful. It makes me scared. Like when I moved to Europe, one of the first things I told my wife was like, wow, I feel so safe here just knowing that there's not, there aren't guns and people with guns and the amount of violence. I don't really understand it. There, there are very political reasons. Like, every political season it's used as a tool to manipulate people they always say oh the democrats are going to steal steal your guns but they're paid by the the gun lobbyists then gun sales go skyrocketing through the roof and all everyone's afraid that people are going to take away their guns is this happens every election it's used as a political tool it's really screwed up There's a lot of division around gun issues in the United States, especially, you know, with all these mass shootings. It's like, I can't keep track of how many shootings there are. You know, oh, did you hear about that mass shooting? Like, which one? I heard something a few years ago, um, someone pointed out, they're like, well, you don't have to legalize guns, but a really good solution would just make, uh, make bullets really, really expensive, you know? 
100, 100 bucks a bullet. Another p argument for guns is that we need to hunt, you know, but how many people hunt for their own food? And statistically speaking, people who argue that that it's for self-protection, statistically yeah. speaking, when people have guns in their house, they're, I, I forget the stat, it's some absurd percentage, like 70% more likely to be used on someone within the house or suicide or something like that. Next, oh, easier. Is it true that you have dinner at 6 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in Europe. I, I've been living in Spain for a while, so I usually have dinner about 8.30. But generally speaking, in the United States, people have dinner anywhere between 5.30 and 7.30, something like that. So early. Merenda. Next, what do you think about the woke culture? Ooh. <laughs> God, am I gonna get canceled if I answer this question? <laughs> no, seriously, whenever I hear that term, I get a little nervous. Like, ooh, what, what aspect of woke culture? I mean, I was raised in a very liberal upbringing, very liberal upbringing, small college town, raised by hippies. Like, uh, my mom had a lot of like lesbian friends and gave, like, to me, a lot of this woke culture is, it's over the top. I'm not gonna get into details in certain discussions, in certain groups in certain areas topics of conversation it can be like there's no there's no conversation and to me intellectual discourse about a topic is really important the deconstruction of like why are we having this conversation what's your opinion what's your opinion and there's a lot of dogma within the left that's starting to seem to me very similar to the right in terms of the the lack of intellectual discourse about a lot of issues that come up social issues that come up this is a weird question but i found it interesting why are americans so used to disposable things people included like i feel like my follower wanted to know why in america there's this culture of like using something and then get, getting rid of it um, is that just in the US? I, I kind of thought that it was all over the world. That's a good I mean, answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe we started it, but everyone else picked up. Next. Is it true that you need a lot of money to eat healthy, to afford healthy food? Yes, absolutely. Um, organic food in the US is so expensive, it's crazy. My mom is a total health freak. She spends her entire social security on uh, organic food. She was about to spend like, I think it was like $6 on a potato. And we're like, no, you can't do that. Like you could barely pay for your med your medication for your diabetes. Like, But her point is that, well, I'm actually here and alive because I eat really healthy because she has all of her life and that's what she taught her children. So it's a really good point. And yes, the answer is absolutely yes. Next, why do you drink huge glasses of cold milk during meals? Well, what movies are you watching? I don't drink milk at all. Well, it's happened to be like I cooked pasta and it was maybe pasta al peso, pasta with seafood, and they were like, oh, this looks so good. Let me pour a nice glass of milk. Really? Yeah. Wow, I, I haven't drank milk since I was a child, so I have no idea. <laughs> Next, do you really lay on your bed with your shoes on? <laughs> Yeah, naked just with my shoes. It's an American thing. It's not just shoes. We we lay naked in our beds with cowboy boots and our guns. Totally true. That's just in the American way. I eat um. Eleventh question. What's the most important thing for an American when they go to a hotel? Something that they must have or they expect. When I go to a hotel, I definitely expect a bed. I know what the real answer is. What's the real answer? <laughs> Air conditioning. Yeah, I guess it depends on where you are. If I'm in Arizona in the summer, the only thing I want is air conditioning, but... The room must be super cold in the summer so that when you go out you have a stomachache and super hot in the winter so that you have to like get naked in your hotel room even though it's like negative 14 degrees outside. Is it true? Yes. Yeah, I never really thought about that. Uh, maybe it's because energy and heat is less expensive because since I've been in Europe, I can't turn up the heat. It's so expensive. Next, is there any rivalry between states? 
Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think there's this weird sort of like local patriotism from state to state, but I don't think I would call it rivalry. But I'm from the West Coast, so I can only speak for the West Coast states. People from Oregon and Washington get pissed off at people from California for coming in and buying real estate because it's cheaper, but I don't think it's rivalry. Maybe in some of the Southern states or like maybe concerning sports. Americans are really into sports. I mean, you do have that kind Kind of like Northern California, Southern California thing, right? Yeah, I mean, hmm. maybe. I mean, I prefer Northern California to Southern California. 13. East Coast or West Coast? West Coast, baby. Yeah, I guess that's a West Coast. Huh? You do this? West Coast? I thought like this was West Coast. There it is. There, that's West Coast gang. I can't even do that. I've got to like try. I can't. I can't. You do. You're you're a gangster, Sonia. I am. Next. <laughs> do you know what an ESTA is? It's like a, a visa to enter the United States as a tourist. Do you really expect someone to select yes while filling out the ESTA questions for the for the question, are you a terrorist? Because honestly, whenever I apply for this ESTA, there are some questions like, are you a terrorist? Are you planning on murdering people when you enter the United States? And I'm like, why are you asking these questions? Do you really expect someone to say yes? That's a great question. Who makes these forms anyways? I feel like sometimes in America, they ask weird questions. Like for example, for a job interview, it's very common to be like, why do you really want to work with us? Okay, I understand if you're applying for like a crazy company like Google, Apple, then you have a nice motivation. But like if it's a restaurant and you just, you want to be a waiter and it's normal restaurants, like why do you really want to work with us? Like, bro, because I need the money. Like, is that really a question? Because I'm super passionate about Applebee's. <laughs> That's what they ask sometimes. Yeah, they expect you to be very enthusiastic for a shit job. Next. Why are Americans obsessed? with the lifestyle that will change your life. Do you know online you always see like this, wake up at 4.30 a.m. every morning and you will be a different person or do this and you will see the results, blah, 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 blah. You're referring to like self-help or advertisements for change your life, like, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's because Americans are so fucking miserable that they're willing to like spend money. <laughs> Do these things only exist targeting Americans or are, are, where are you getting this? I think it's true that self-help is bigger in America compared to Italy, but it's something I, I like. I like self-help. Not all the things you find online are useful, but I think it's cool that in America you have that like attention to self-improving, like wanting to become the better version of yourself. I think it's cool. Even mental health. I think in America is like bigger, more accepted, it's easier to get access to like mental health resources, you know? For sure. And self-help is, I mean, like I, I told you a little bit about my background. I mean, my mom was a total self-help hippie and like, I think there's a difference between self-help and marketing towards people who are miserable and trying to sell them like change your life because, you know, this is, you know, but you have to figure that the population of the U.S. is 325 million or so. Like there's a lot more people to sell to. You basically sell anything. And you're more willing to spend. Americans spend more money. Money. Italians are more like, should I really buy this? Yeah, and then we go into debt. Our entire society is based on debt. So we go into debt doing it. Everyone's in credit card debt in the United States. Uh, two more questions and then we're done. How proud are you of your nation? Um, well, I'm not a patriotard. Uh, can I say that? Was that not woke enough? Yeah, no, no. I like, I can tell because every question you're like, terrible, bad. Okay, let let me. If you know a country well enough, then you're gonna see the flaws in it. But I also see the beautiful things about the U.S. because I left the U.S. There are certain things about the United States that I really miss that I don't find in Europe, like multiculturalism. And, and just the topic of identity is a really interesting topic. Like, how can you be this color and still be American? And, and like, we have racist problems with racism in the, in the United States. Big problems. Big problems with guns. Big problems with racism. Big problems with the medical system. But it, it's a different sort of racism than than in Europe because in Europe it's more of a bloodline it's like you will never be Italian unless you're Italian bloodline Spanish or you know what I mean 
But what I do miss is that sense of like, oh, we are all one people. And and I'm talking about, mind you, I'm talking about the more progressive metropolitan areas like the Bay Area, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, where you go. And there's just people from everywhere all over the world. It's colorful. It's beautiful. That idea of the American dream, it does exist, you know, and the, the hardest working people in the U.S. are immigrants, new immigrants who go there for a better life. They work their asses off way more than Americans who are born there, or second, third, fourth, fifth generations who are just born into privilege. So I'm proud of my country. I guess I'm not blindly proud. I think that the government is deeply flawed. I think part of being being a patriot is questioning your government. I think it's a really important part of being patriotic is keeping your government in check. Last, would you live in Italy? I don't know. As to, to my surprise, I've still, still never been to Italy. I was about to go there last year and, and it was tourist season. So I couldn't find a place that I could afford that had good internet. So I don't know. I've never been to Italy. Someone invite me. <laughs> Italy looks amazing. And it's one of the things on my year long trip last year where I was like, I wherever I have to go, the one place I need to go is Italy. The it one place you need. Thank you. Grazie a Mason. Grazie a voi ragazzi di aver fatto le vostre domande. Vi ricordo che i suoi contatti li lascio qui sotto in info box. Se siete curiosi o se volete prendere qualche lezione. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Bossy, 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 bossy